Meet World of T-Shirts. It's my only source of income. I'll sue the government. What? Where's the hat? Where's the hat? The red guy in the red. In red. Be quiet. No, yeah. We're doing stuff here. <laughs> World of T-Shirts, also known as Joshua Block, is a prominent TikTok user with over 2.4 million subscribers as of the recording of this video. Another thing of note is that Josh is autistic, often finding it very difficult to express emotion, and it was this emotionless, awkward style that made him so famous on the platform. Though Josh has been making videos for years, his channel really started to take off in 2020. His incredibly awkward dancing videos were a complete hit, but he would have other popular videos where he would either commentate or criticize certain TikToks or products. Like this TikTok, where he reviews some form of candy absolutely emotionless. This will change the color of your tongue permanently for weeks. We're gonna put these in my mouth and wait 10 minutes. It's not coming off. Jesus, Josh, I just came to see a candy review, not get hit with the gaze of miracles. This almost feels like I'm watching an episode of Mind Hunter. There is absolutely no facial movement above the nose. His eyes do not move, his eyebrows do not move. It is it is very, very unnerving. That's what makes this TikTok so funny to me. But there's another really famous TikTok that I just don't get, so I'm gonna show it to you guys, and if you know why it's so funny, tell me why down in the comments, because I have no idea why this one blew up. I'll be honest, I don't really understand, but I fell down the stairs and now I got glue on my hand. See, I get why videos like the one you're watching on screen right now blew up, and I get why the candy review blew up, but I don't understand that other one we just watched. But I guess that's part of the internet, you're never gonna get every joke. With the success of all of his videos, Josh had amassed a pretty hefty following, and he was verified on TikTok, meaning he could now make money from the platform, and he decided he was gonna make it his full-time job. But he quickly ran into a problem. He was not able to get enough content in the area he lived, Especially when he's trying to go full-time, he's filming dozens of 60-second videos a day, he's doing live streams. He knew he had to go somewhere where the action was thick. And he finally settled on a location that would change not only his life, but his career forever. Yeah, yeah. In New York, concrete jungle where dreams are made of, there's nothing you can't do. Now you're in New York! Okay, so a couple things here. He's singing Empire State of Mind by Jay-Z, specifically the verses that Alicia Keys sings. And another point is you can obviously hear people laughing at him in the background. But the funniest thing of all is that this is one of his most famous TikToks, and it would start a string of events that would lead to the catastrophe that is Joshua's life today. But before this massive downfall, Josh would have one more triumphant victory. He had somehow accumulated enough money where he rented out a billboard on Times Square and promoted his TikTok channel. This could not have been cheap, and it was a big moment for not only Josh, but his fans, who assembled there in Times Square to witness history in the making. Brian 
pride comes before the fall, and this would be no truer than in the story of Joshua Block. At first, it had not dawned on Josh just how big he was getting, just how recognizable he would be in the streets of New York, and just how many people wanted to get him on film or have an interaction with him. It would start off relatively innocent, with people just wanting to film him or get a picture. We're burying it. Go to Yo, you're that guy. Oh, oh, you, you, you you're that guy, right? Video. You're that guy, though, right? Yeah, yeah, okay, okay. <laughs> Do your thing, man. You're good, man. You're good. You're good, you're good, you're good, you're good. You're good. Keep him in the video. You can see that his ego is getting to him a little bit because he's like, you ruined my video. Even though you're in the middle of New York, some guy saying hey to you is not going to ruin anything. Something I also want to point out is just how scared Josh was by that guy saying hi to him. Confirming that this has likely happened before, and that some of them were not positive interactions. His fears would be justified, because one day, a fan of his tracks him like a wild animal all over the city. Josh may claim to be the king of the concrete jungle, but it became quickly apparent that Douglas Skates knew the streets much better than Josh Block. And even though Josh could run, which he did a lot of, he could not hide. What's going on, man? Not much. My name is Dujon, and I've been hired by somebody on TikTok to supervise all autistic people. And uh, it looks like you're in need of my help. I'm going to be your bodyguard slash caretaker. No, you won't. Hey, get back here. Stop the skates. Hey, bro, get back here. Sorry. Ah! Go away. You want me to call the police on you? What a coincidence, bro. I just wanted to say that book with you, bro. A lot of people need to be like you. I, run my I don't want to talk to you. I'm here to help. No. If you, if I'm calling the fucking police, and it's Douglas Skates. Why don't I report Look, I, I don't you? Know. I've been paid, bro. I've been paid to come. Well, back. tell him to cancel. No. Tell him you want the money. No, chill, chill out. Go away. Don't make me. No, I don't want to talk to you. No. I'm your no, you're not. I'm calling security. What a random coincidence, sir. No. I don't want to get away from me. No. Get away. Get away. Get away. No. Josh. Oh, this is a random like, I told you I was here. Oh my fucking god! How did you know I was here? That's it. I'm fucking done. I don't get I don't get paid enough for this shit. I'm gonna let you have it. I just wanted to take a picture of No. Take a picture of me and go. Sir. I wanted to also donate you a shirt. I heard you've been wearing the same shirt before. Go! Go! Oh my fucking god! Stay away from me! Douglas Gates ran behind you again, man. No! Everyone's saying I just want to donate you a shirt. I don't want if a gift. I have shirts in my bag. No! Come on, please! You're, you're creepy. Dude. You shady bitch. He sit back again. I don't know what to do. My life is over. Yeah. Fuck you! How did you get here? I was just randomly walking, dude. I'm over here trolling bots. Somebody get him away from me. I'm just trolling bots. Um, um. No. Go away. Are you following me? No. How'd you Are get you here? Me, bro, I'm You're scary. Show. I'm begging you! If you don't go, I will call the police! Oh my god, I don't know what to do. I don't know what to do. What the fuck? What the fuck? 
No joke, guys, this man had to have found Josh at least four or five times all over the city, hunting him down based solely on his knowledge of the streets. I think Josh believes something supernatural is going on here. He cannot comprehend how this man is able to outsmart him and end up right in front of him every time. Incidents like this would continue to happen on his live streams with increasing frequency. I can only imagine the shit he got when he was off camera too. Josh was truly an internet celebrity. Everything he dreamed of years ago when he was making dance videos in his grandpa's house. This dream was quickly becoming a nightmare for Josh. He was getting stopped on the street so much for people wanting to do TikToks, people wanting pictures, that he began to charge $50 a TikTok. 50 bucks for either a picture or a 60 second video with Josh. As crazy as that sounds, as crazy you would have to be to pay for it, many people did. And even though he was getting paid $50 a minute, it could not have been more of an inconvenience for him. I charge my fans for photos because I don't, because if I just take their picture, they're going to get famous quickly for nothing. Where does Venmo work? Uh, cash, I don't have Venmo, I have Cash App. So I can't send it up. What? I can't send it up? No, I don't want you to run off without paying. Hey, yeah! New York Concrete jungle where dreams are made of There's nothing you can't do Now you're in New York I don't know about you guys, but if that was me, I would go to bed at night and I would say to myself, that is money well spent. I mean, Josh gave it his all. His singing was beautiful. He looked directly into the camera. He was having such a good time filming this with me. That was 50 bucks well spent. Sarcasm aside, look at how little effort Josh is putting into this. You would have thought he got paid five bucks for this TikTok. No, he's charging 50 bucks for that dribble. You can get cameos from famous people for cheaper. Josh's narcissism was growing rapidly, as was his fan base. And while they made fun of Josh, they truly seemed to care about him. And even though I could tell Josh was getting more and more narcissistic by the minute, I was beginning to feel the same way. But then, I would find an old video of Josh's that would change my opinion on him completely. One day, Josh and a fan of his were fishing at a local pond. And after catching a pretty nice sized bluegill, Josh decides to abuse and kill it. Viewer discretion is advised. Yeah, this is the TikTok. <laughs> The dirty pond isn't right. What are you doing? The dirty pond. Why are you stomping right. out a bluegill? It's not right for him to be in the dirty pond. But but now he's dead. <laughs> I think he was pretty happy until you stomped him out. As someone who has both fished for and eaten a couple of these little dudes, this disgusts me to my very core. And it's not just me who's upset over this, it's basically everyone who's seen it. Everyone who's seen it knows it's messed up. Josh is obviously getting some kind of enjoyment out of this. He's got the biggest grin I've ever seen across his face while he's doing it. And this rubbed a lot of people, myself included, the wrong way. This would of course lead to an influx of negative comments on his TikToks and many other problems that Josh would incur in the future. And I think it's finally time we get into one of the biggest problems that Josh is facing today, a man named Michael Quinn. Michael Quinn is a failed TikToker, a failed YouTuber, and a general scumbag of a human being. After gaining almost no popularity on any platform, Michael Quinn decided that he was going to hitch his cart to the right horse. Quinn lived in New York, so it was not hard for him to track down Josh and begin to manipulate him. After a little while, Quinn had weaseled himself into the position of manager under World of T-Shirts, where he would take a cut of Josh's money as payment for his services. He would also be the mastermind behind the World of T-Shirts New York tours, where Josh would lead a group of people who paid around the city, showing them the sights. Of course, Michael Quinn would also be taking a cut of this. 
And to say that the tours were a hotbed of trollsome behavior would be an understatement. Someone's meeting him. Someone's meeting him. Where's the hat? Where's the hat? The red guy in the red. In red. Where's the fucking hat? Somebody stole it. Who would want to steal a fucking hat? Even less convincing than Michael Quinn's die job is his claims of actually caring for Josh. The video you're seeing right now is the product of Michael Quinn convincing Josh that he should smoke cigarettes more often. Proudly streaming Josh absolutely chuffing this thing like there's no tomorrow to hundreds of people on his TikTok. Michael Quinn will also convince Josh to drink more, something that he definitely doesn't need in his life. Josh already loves alcohol, often stumbling around the city absolutely wasted. It's one of the most dangerous things you can do. Michael Quinn not only talks him out into going and drinking more, but he also films him when he's at his very worst. Like this video I'm about to show you where him and Josh use racial slurs very casually and openly on the streets. Stop trying to cancel me and get a fucking job. I didn't know what that meant. No? I didn't know what porch meant. I didn't know what, what it, it was racist. Like, give me a fucking break. I'm just trying to make a living. You live paycheck to paycheck. I live paycheck to fucking paycheck. Give me a break right now. I've been on this app for three fucking years. I can't believe that guy set me up. Yeah. I didn't know what that meant. I thought porch was an innocent cameo. Funky monkey, porch, that funky monkey. I didn't know what it meant. You, you, thought, you thought it was just a, um. It was just a cameo, I didn't know. You thought it was a Beastie Boy song, right? No, I thought it was an innocent cameo. I'll sue the person who gave me that cameo for millions of fucking dollars. Emotional damage. Loss of income, loss of enjoyment of life. See what I mean, guys? Michael Quinn is instigating all of this. He wants Josh to act up. He wants Josh to make a fool of himself so that he can be there on his live stream recording the whole thing. But the part that bothers me is the fact that he's putting Josh in actual danger, convincing him to smoke cigarettes, convincing him to drink more alcohol, taking cuts of his money that he has no right in taking. Quinn is just one of those stereotypical scumbag lolcow managers. We've seen it many times before, we'll see it till the end of the internet. The only thing I am thankful for Quinn doing is filming the interaction between Daniel Larson and World of T-Shirts. See, Daniel Larson was trolled into traveling from California to New York, and when Daniel landed in New York, he was convinced to meet up with the infamous World of T-Shirts. People had been asking for this collab for quite some time because they were two of the most prominent crazy people on the platform. And of course, Michael Quinn would be there to stream the whole thing. Hey, hello, this is Joshua Block. What's up? Let me, let Let's me see you shake hands. hands. Shake hands, guys. Hold on, hold on. Let me get... Hey, Daniel, good to see you, buddy. Good How you feeling? I'm doing good. What's it like to meet Josh oh. in person? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I could find somewhere inside to stay or whatever, go down in the subway or whatever. Yeah. But I, I got my phone scores in my sleep. Yeah. And I woke up. When was, when was this song? It was um, apparently right out at the Morgan Fulton Station. Oh, you have a hotel room? I've been staying at the Fulton in all truth, this meetup was historic, but also pretty uneventful. Daniel would not be sleeping in the subways of New York for long as he would return to Colorado soon after this meetup. And if you're looking for a source on Daniel Larson content, there are two channels I cannot recommend enough. Number one, Perk 30. Excellent documentaries on Daniel Larson. Their channel will be in the description below. And Smokey MCC, who does great updates on Daniel Larson. Go show their channels some support. They're both excellent guys and great content creators. And now that we have covered the rise of Joshua Block, it's time for the fall. 
Josh had been going downhill for quite some time, drinking a lot more, getting into fights on the street, but over the past couple months, things have taken a whole new turn for the worse. People are tired of this entitled attitude that Josh has been carrying with himself all over New York. In the past, people would call him out for this behavior and he would go about his day, but the combination of alcoholism and narcissism has caused Josh to react in a whole new manner. Fuck you! Oh, fuck you! are a racist piece of shit! You are boy! Piece of shit! Oh, fuck you! Speak the fuck you! He said you're a piece of shit. I gave him a taste of his own medicine. But you haven't seen anything yet, folks, because Josh is not just going to yell at people, he's also going to attack them and their property. This video I'm about to show you is infamous. Josh is having a very public meltdown. He had gotten in some kind of an altercation with a couple of gentlemen in a gray van. And after telling Josh that he was a coward and he wouldn't do anything, Josh runs right up and kicks their van, which doesn't go very well for him. After they threaten to run Josh over, he goes down the street screaming bloody murder. You can even see some of the passengers in the van have the doors open and they're ready to run down Josh for themselves. Little do they know, World of T-Shirts is very used to this, and he's quite quick. Just further proof that this has happened to Josh off-camera before. He wasn't even recording this. This was just some random guy on the street who posted this to TikTok. I will never understand Josh's blatant disrespect to people. It's so dangerous. Getting drunk in the middle of a city is dangerous. Disrespecting people on the street, you're asking for trouble. Josh is so insanely lucky to still be alive. Because he's causing problems everywhere, guys. Just a couple weeks ago, Josh announced that he was going to be taking a trip to Iceland because the United States government wanted to get rid of TikTok and he was tired of living in a dictatorship. And during a TikTok live through the subways of New York City, Josh is discussing all of this. And when his fellow passengers start pressing him on his beliefs, he gives us another classic World of T-Shirts moment. I can't fucking believe I was born in a dictatorship. They're gonna ban TikTok in the US. What am I gonna do? What am I gonna do? It's my only source of income. What the hell is happening right now? They're gonna ban TikTok in the US. It's my only form of income. It's my only source of income. Shut the fuck up! I'll sue you for millions of fucking dollars. You know what? I'm. You know what? I'm moving to a different car. Fucking jerk! I'll sue your ass. I can't do this anymore. I'll fucking sue the government if that bill passes. I'll sue the government. You fucking unemployed bitch! I'll fucking sue you! You fuck! You son of a fucking bitch! He punched me! He punched me! He freaking punched me! The guy punched me! Some guy punched me! I was watching your live! Nobody fucking Bro, I can't punched really me! Yeah, he right did! <laughs> He punched me in the face. Wait till you get the fucking Babylon and shut the fuck up. Nobody fucking punched you. Yeah, he All right? did. Nobody fucking punched you. Take your fucking hat off. Don't shut tell me up. what to do. Go to sleep. It's fucking three in the morning. Okay, so a couple of things to unpack here. Number one, this is what Josh calls punching him. Someone just flicked his hat, maybe trying to knock it backwards. I don't even think they touched Josh at all. 
They ran right off the track. It was obviously just a light troll. Nobody hit you, Josh. Another thing of note is it's 3 a.m. and Josh is causing this much of an issue. Everybody else on the train is being peaceful. They've probably had a long day. They're ready to go home. No one wants to have to deal with you, who they probably think is on drugs. And the final thing I want to mention is just how hard that girl was pressing him at the end. He wouldn't say anything to her, but he's willing to run down a guy on the subway platform for flicking his hat. Josh wasn't joking. He actually did go to Iceland about a week back, and at this time during the production of the video, he hasn't come back to the U.S. And that's where we leave the World of T-Shirts story for today, folks. I'm definitely intrigued by Joshua Block. I'm going to continue to follow his story, and if anything crazy happens, I'll keep you guys updated right here. I want to thank you so much for watching. Thank you so much for liking. Thank you for subscribing. Thank you to all my channel members. Much love to you guys. And thank you to you watching this video right now. Yes, you. I really appreciate you watching it this far. Thank you for supporting my channel so much. And I hope that you have a wonderful day, night, afternoon, wherever you are. Just have a great day. Thank you once again, and be sure to keep it Kiwi.